Watch! <gasps> there is a crushing wave coming to cleanse this land of corruption. It is unstoppable! I ride Blue Storm Dragon Maelstrom! And boom! Welcome back, everyone. My name is Steven Rodriguez. I'm your true champion. And yes, as you can tell by the intro, the lights behind me and the blue shirt that I'm wearing today, ooh, we're doing our brand new Aqua Force deck in Carpet Vanguard Zero Global. The brand new set of Blue Storm Mata finally gave birth to one of the most hype clans of hype clans in the history of Vanguard Zero. And I'm super excited to play this deck, not only because I think it's really good, as I explained during my best decks video, but also because I've never played Aqua Force before IRL on the TCG. So I'm very excited to finally experience firsthand how fun the Navy of Carvite Vanguard Zero can be. I think today's deck list might actually surprise you guys and some of the thoughts that I had with it. So I'm really excited to share it with you. If you guys are excited, be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell for notifications so that you guys know when my videos go live for you. I think like 50-ish percent of you guys aren't actually subscribed that watch these videos. So just know that I do post videos a lot every single week, doing all kinds of things from TCG to Vanguard Zero to uh, anime-related content here on the channel. So if that kind of stuff interests you, just know that subscribing is always an option. And with that being said, you guys, before we move on to the actual deck list, I did have an announcement for you guys today. As some of you may know, I have a brand new series on my Twitch channel called the Deck Doctor series, where I go over deck submissions and sort of deck slash TCG questions you guys have, and I try and answer them live and in person over on my Twitch channel pretty much every other week. And the goal of the series is to kind of help you guys improve your TCG game sort of all at once, because I get a lot of DMs on Twitter, Instagram, uh, here on YouTube all the time of people being like, hey, can you take a look at my deck? Hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of that card? What do you think of this? And I get all these kinds of questions and having this deck doctor series is sort of like a one stop, like I will answer your questions here and in person, just come by and I'll answer them for you is a really good thing. You guys really seem to love it and I want to keep doing it. If you yourself have a deck you're working on or some questions you might have about the TCG you play, it doesn't need to be Vanguard Zero, it can be any TCG. By all means, join our Discord, link down below to that and type your deck list or put a screenshot slash deck code whatever kind of way you can capture your deck list or like make sure I know what cards are in it and post it in the hashtag deck doctor chat of my discord server and I'll be more than happy to take a look at it during the next deck doctor episode over on twitch if you want to include like a specific problem or like question you're having with your deck list in particular by all means go ahead and do so it actually does help me give you more targeted information uh, so that way I can have a better idea of what to tell you versus just like generic tips and tricks and hope something sticks also, if you see a deck list in that chat that you really want me to talk about, by all means, go ahead and leave a reaction to that deck list so that way I know to talk about it during the next video. And if a lot of people start doing it, I'll realize, oh, my entire community really wants me to talk about this, so I'll do that. It really helps me kind of keep an eye on what you guys are really interested in during this series. I'm planning the next Deck Doctor episode to be Wednesday, 10 a.m. PST over on my Twitch channel, so be sure to come stop by. Links to my Twitch down below, as always. And with all that out the way, you guys, let's get to what you came here for, my brand new new Aqua Force deck list in the Carpet Vanguard Zero global format. All right, boys and girls, here we are. My Aqua Force, Maelstrom, Naval Gazer, Diamantes, Aqua Force good stuff list basically uh, I'm very excited I love this deck but as you can see there's a lot of stuff blacked out in it because I'm a sad sad boy and my pulls were absolute garbage for Aqua Force I have a lot of grinding to do if I want to be competitive in set 8 as well as set 9 format but nonetheless thanks to the rental system I can still give you guys this video so big ups to my boys at game studio awesome inclusion all right but let's talk about this deck as you can tell we're running the full spam of triple rares 444 four, four, naval gazer diamantes and maelstrom I'm sorry for the free-to-play player out there I will give you a cheaper option for this deck in case you don't want to play this many triple rares I do apologize but I think it's for good reason now before I get into the deck list or the specific cards I want to talk about sort of what this deck is aiming for if you guys don't know Aqua Force is sort of a advantage deck disguised as a multi-attack deck so it has a lot of really good aggressive options both early and late game but its main stick is really good value on its cards in terms of being able to always like little cheap attacks at your opponent or have really cool retire effects like Valeria or Maelstrom as well as on draw effects like Algos, Penguin Soldier and of course Maelstrom again you guys hear me keep talking about Maelstrom right Maelstrom is the big key card of this deck and he kind of perfectly sums up everything I'm talking about so he has two main skills the first one really simple when he attacks a Vanguard power plus 3k seen before really strong 
The main skill, though, is the Limit Break skill, and this got a huge buff. I'll talk about what the buffs are in a second, but his Limit Break skill is when this unit attacks a Vanguard, if it is the fourth battle of that turn or more, it gets power plus 5,000 until and, and the following ability until under that battle. At the end of the battle, that this unit attacked, draw a card, and retire one of your opponent's rear guards. Really, really strong. The main buffs to this card was that this effect used to be a counter blast and it used to be on hit. Now it just guarantee happens and is free. Super strong. And you guys notice that it's the fourth battle of that turn or more. That, that's kind of the idea of like advantage disguised as aggression because you need to have at least four attacks during your turn in order to activate the skill. But once you do, you retire one of your opponent's units and you draw a card, a pseudo plus two because you're drawing one and they're losing one, but really it's a neg one for them and a plus one for you. And that's really, really strong. Let's you have really good board advantage over your opponent, really good advantage pressure and tempo against your opponent. Super strong, love this card. And I sort of built the entire deck around synergizing with that strategy, um, as well as sort of controlling for the weaknesses it might have. I'll explain more about that as we go through, but let's cover the rest of our grade threes. The first one, I think the most important grade three besides Maelstrom is of course Stormrider Diamantes. Him along with Basil are gonna be our main sort of attack enablers. They get us to that fourth battler more during our, during our turn instead of just three. His main skill is Rear Guard Circle. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, if it is the first battle that turn, it gets power plus 3,000 to under that turn. At the end of the battle, this, at the end of the battle, exchange this unit's position with your rear guard in the same column. So you swing with them. It's, if it's the first battle, you switch the positions. Really simple. It lets you turn your back row booster or back row unit into an attacker, which then gets you that fourth battle that you need to activate other skills. And his second skill is actually a buff to this unit uh, in Vanguard Zero, which is once per turn rear guard act. Kind of last one to have this unit ignore intercept when attacking if it is the first battle of that turn. So now in Vanguard Zero, if there's two intercepts in the front row, you can activate your kind of blast and then swing and guarantee poke at the Vanguard, even though there are intercepts in the front row. This enables you to still activate your effect, even though your opponent has intercepts. Really strong. And like I said, him along with Stormrider Basil are going to be our main uh, attack enablers. He has the exact same effect as Diamantes, except he's a grade two, which is super cool. And our last main grade three is going to be Naval Gazer Dragon. He's going to be our heal trigger, and he's sort of in here as a backup grade three because this deck no matter how consistent or strong or advantage it is, it is on the whole a combo deck. It requires pieces in order to do what it wants to do. And sometimes you don't draw those pieces. Either you don't have a Storm Rider in your hand, your opponent keeps retiring yours, so you can't keep them in play, or you never see a Maelstrom, therefore you can't do anything really important because Diamantes is a vanilla Vanguard and your 13K attacker as well, 13K attacker doesn't really do much for you. So having access to Naval Gazer as sort of a backup grade three is really strong. And also a cool thing about him is that all of his effects work on the third battle or more, which means you don't need any attack enablers in order to activate his skills, which is also super nice. He does work for less than Maelstrom does, which is super cool. And his two main skills are, if it is the third battle of that turn more, he gets power plus 3,000. He can't attack anything with that, which is kind of cool, uh, unlike Maelstrom. And then his first skill is his limit break skill. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, it gets power plus 3,000. So he gets to become six, uh, he gets to become 17,000 on swing if you activate both effects. And if it is the third battle of that turn or more, it gets the following ability. When this unit attack hits, counter blast two to stand two of your rear guard. So what's really cool is you get the automatic, like when I attack, get limit break, you can't heal out of it, super cool. And when you hit, whether or not you do or not, you get to counter two and stand two of your rear guards really really strong a cool thing with this card actually uh, that I've been learning and testing is that he's a really good finisher if your opponent's at four damage you can swing it with two little chump guides whether it's coral salt algos algos valeria whatever it is at two rear guards get rid of them and then you swing your vanguard guarantee hit stand them back up if they are coral salt and algos they, they'll gain power and you can attack them again and maybe even play around defensive triggers really strong way to sort of finish out the game without needing maelstrom or just kind of grinding your way to victory like you would with Maelstrom. All right, honesty time. The real reason I'm playing Naval Gazer Dragon isn't because he's a great backup ride, isn't because he's a powerful card and I think he's a good card. Those are all just bonuses on top of playing him. But the main reason I'm playing him is because I'm playing Splash Assault and I'm not playing any copies of Theo. What does this mean? Uh, basically, there's two versions, if you want to call it that, of Aqua Force right now. There's cheaper, more consistent Aqua Force, and then there's like bum rush, play the strongest cards in Aqua Force, don't even care Aqua Force. And that's kind of what this one is. But I have a mentality when using this one. The other version, you would play cards like the 13K Attacker, Tier Knight Theo, and Tier Knight Lazarus, which are all really cheap cards. They're all rare and below, and they are just good consistency cards. They're the 8K, the 10K Vanilla, as well as the 13K Attacker, so you can have your rear guards hit 21K, on turns when you don't have limit break or you don't want to use your limit break. Uh, you can play against cross rides really well with these cards. You know, that's like the more consistent, just grindier version. This version has a bit 
more aggression to it, both in the early and the late game, thanks to cards like Naval Gazer Dragon and Splash Assault. But also, because you're not playing 8Ks in this deck, you don't get as much value out of 13K attackers because you can't hit 21. The most you can hit is 20 with your rear guards. So I don't see a real reason to play 13K attackers if you're not playing Theo. So that's why I'm not playing extra copies of this 13K attacker. And instead, I'm playing four copies of Naval Gazer Dragon. I think there's plenty of room in Aqua Force right now for sort of changes or specific natures to fit your card pool. So don't worry about playing this exact list. There's plenty of good ways to still use this main strategy in Vanguard Zero right now. This is just the best way that I have found to do it, given other things that I'm about to tell you. So that's about it for the grade threes, as well as the main strategy of this deck. Let's talk about the grade twos. Like I said, we have Storm Rider Basil. He's going to be our main sort of attack enabler as grade two instead of Diamandis being grade three. A cool thing about this card is that he does enable grade two rush turns with cards like Valeria, Algos, and Coral Salt because both Algos and Valeria have fourth battle or more abilities, uh, both Vanguard and Rearguard, by the way, which is super cool. So Algos here, uh, Vanguard Rearguard, when this, when this attack hits, if it is the fourth battle that turn or more, draw a card, really strong, lets you just get awesome value. And then uh, Vanguard Rearguard, when this unit attacks, if it is the fourth battle that turn or more, count last one to get power plus 5,000, super cool. Making him a 14K attacker, plus a splash assault equals 21, super good numbers. And then you have Valeria, which, Similar skills. Uh, the second one is the exact same skill. When this unit attacks, if it's fourth battle that turn or more, count plus one drop to gain 5k. And then her first skill is when this unit attacks, hits a vanguard. If it is the fourth battle that turn or more, retire one of your opponent's rear guards. Have you noticed a little secret here? These two cards, Valeria and Algos, both of their skills combined equal Maelstrom. So that's a super cool thing about these about this deck. Is essentially the way I've built it. It has a Maelstrom button on turn two if you draw the right amount of cards. And I have a ton of draw power in this deck. So even if you draw like one of them or or two of them, you can have a really powerful grade two turn that accelerates your advantage and pressure against your opponent. And that's kind of the idea. And then finally, we have Coral Salt. He's the 12k attacker, third battle or more for that turn. Really, really good skill. Uh, he's the main card we love to have behind a Diamantes or behind a Basil because he be not not only is he an intercept, uh, but he can most likely attack any rear guard or vanguard by himself, barring any defensive triggers. And yeah, so while a grade two lineup is pretty simple and I think standard, uh, it is missing a couple of things. For example, no tier knight Lazarus, no 10k vanilla, that is because there's no room. And then one card that I'm missing in here that I think is actually a bigger problem than I think it might be is the damage adder. I'm not playing any grade two damage add, instead I'm only playing three copies of the grade one damage add. And this is like the one thing about this list that I don't like. The other version of Maelstrom, the cheaper version, can have room for two, maybe even three more copies of the grade two 8k damage damage add, which is really good for your limit break consistency. But given that I've kind of built this deck to have options outside of limit break, uh, I think makes it okay that I'm not playing as many. And with the amount of draw power we have via Maelstrom, Algos, and Penguin Soldier, as well as our Draco Kid starter, I feel like we have enough dig in our deck to grab these and hold onto them in our hand for when we absolutely need them. For those reasons, I feel like this is the most optimal grade two lineup. I prefer having Algos over Valeria because most of the time the retirement isn't as useful as the draw because every now and then all your opponents gonna call us front rows and you and you just attack those anyway so it's no big deal and finally moving on to the grade ones we have of course the four PGs as well as our three damage adds I've kind of already stated why they're in here and enables limit break and of course we need defense so that makes sense I'm playing two light signals penguin soldier uh, this is sort of to add to our grade two turn because we tend to proc our starter really early he is going to soul so thus we can get uh, the draw really early or just having a really nice just plop band our booster draw a piece for our big combo for fourth battle or more is really nice as adds to our general consistency and then finally we have splash assault he is the 10k attacker uh third battle or more if he's in the front row you have have you guys been noticing a trend here we want to have powerful units that we can use to cheap at little rear guards or we want to just be able to kind of poke opponents vanguards this card's actually really good on the grade two turn because if you draw him for your grade two turn you can put him behind a basil not only protect the basil by putting in the back row but also you get a little cheap attack at a rear guard if your opponent has one or just at the vanguard to proc your fourth battle or more for that turn but if you do have a rear guard that you can hit you can hit it which is super nice like i said there are some there is some room here in the grade one slots there's tier knight theo he's the 8k vanilla for aqua force i think he'd be a great inclusion if you do include him in this deck you have even more reason to play more copies of the 13k attacker and less copies of naval gazer dragon which is also super cool and much cheaper for you which is just nice An another really cool inclusion in this deck to kind of add to the consistency is like the grade one airmo clone she's like green and has a trident i forget her name but she's really good because like i said you're a combo deck and have 
having access to an airmo clone uh, to drop and draw is really nice but yeah guys that's it for the main deck i'm playing nine draw triggers as well because like i said again and again and again we are a combo deck we need pieces we need resources uh if we fight against narukami or against other retired base decks uh that just attack our rear guards we need to be able to refuel them every single turn so that we have plenty of bodies to actually attack with in order to prop our skills so nine draws is a natural thing in this list in particular if you want if you want to play like a, like a different trigger i think crits are your only option and even then it doesn't really do much for you because most of the time you're not trying to just like poke at your opponent most of the time all you're trying to do is poke at your opponent gradually with four attacks every single turn plus all the retire and draw and advantage you create will just naturally grind out a victory for you so you don't really need fancy tricks like crits or stands in this deck honestly nine draws all you need and finally moving on to our starter we have aqua breath draco kid like i said previously he has a put in soul skill of gaining 1000 power to one of your units as well as the following ability when this unit attack hits a vanguard if it's the fourth battle that turn or more draw a card now this could be an argument like this one card could be an argument for running stand triggers but honestly if you want to be like really cute and like restand the unit you get the effect to with this it's better to do it with navel gazer because at least at that point it's guaranteed so don't worry about cute stuff like that we're not trying to be cute we're trying to be consistent and that's what this card does i think like try hold draco kid for like extra attacks in the end of the game is cool but not needed i think a card like the little lady that like restands units uh but, but putting yourself in soul is kind of cool but again not needed i think this is simple that's what we needed to do and it can be used as early as turn two and still get value because thanks to basil we have a really powerful early turn we have a really powerful early turn play of four attacks or more given our hand so this is a really nice card i think it can lead to really good plays and i just like it the most oh and there you guys go that is my aqua force deck list if you guys have any questions please feel free to leave them down in the comments below or better yet hop into my twitch channel i go live every monday thursday friday i do all kinds of things in just chatting and i play a lot of vanguard zero so come ask some questions and hopefully get some live answers and with all that out the way you guys let's go ahead and take this deck over on the rank ladder sacrifice a lot of creation stones and see what it can do all right boys and girls here we are for game one fighting against shadow paladin oh no our first match with this deck on video we're fighting against a potential cross ride deck please just be shadow duke because i wanted to deal with cross ride probably but it is a possibility uh man this is the one thing about my deck list is that going going against cross ride isn't the most fun thing in the world because if I don't save my Draco Kid for Diamantes, I don't get any damage with my procs, but I will I will be smart enough to do that and save it in case I don't in case I draw everything I need. Uh opening hand looks meh. I will return everything except for the grade one, two. And there's a maelstrom at least. So while we may not have a grade two turn, uh, we will have a consistent ride up, which is more than enough to ask for. Plus two PGs, which against Shadow Paladins, uh, especially if it's nine crit shadows, is going to be really good. There's a third Pascal in our hand, uh, so we're going to be super defensive uh, this game, which I don't mind. We're a grindy deck, like I said. Um, should be okay. I will say in matchups like these, where like it, it looks like it, it looks like we're going to be playing very defensive and going for like a longer game, with how much draw power we do have, there is like the slight risk of decking out, but it, it never really comes up. So don't worry about it too much because we're naturally so aggressive with all the cards we play. But just know, keep it in mind. Don't be just drawing like crazy if you don't have to. There's the first crit, so that's pretty much assuming that he's 9 crit. There's the PBO, we haven't seen any PBD, haven't seen any sign of Spec Duke. I'm pretty sure he's not going to be playing Spec Duke given that he's playing the PBO ride chain, so um, that's bad. But there's an Algo, so if we get a top deck here of... No, it's not worth it because he's 8k. If he was like 6k, I would have done it. Ooh, there's a, six... there's a Penguin Soldier though, which is nice. Um, I don't know how aggressive I want to be. I won't be aggressive at all. Yeah, like zero. Yeah, I'm just, you know what? Give me another crit. Give me limit break on my first grade three ride. I won't complain. I will not complain at all. Oh yeah, there's nine crits. And that's proof right there that he's not playing Spectre. He's playing Dark Dictator instead. Good to know. I wouldn't mind seeing like Basil or Diamantes here uh, on the next turn. That'd be super huge, especially if he does go for that really aggressive play of like giving us four damage right away. Uh, given that we have three PGs though, it won't really matter because we'll have plenty of turns to keep grinding against him. But I don't think he's gonna, there's a Skull Witch in the main. Okay, that's a good sign. That means he can't attack us twice as we're 9K. He needs to have something else plus a booster. Uh, he discards a Blaster Dark, draws us two cards. If he gets like two boosters or attacker plus a booster, he'll be able to poke us for two damage, but I don't think he wants to. I, 
I, I, I wonder how much he's gonna be playing around on limit break. Also, I will say having access to retire effects against shadows is super good, especially when they're free retire effects like Valeria and or Maelstrom, which is really good. Uh, there's a Curse Lancer. He wants that counter charge more than anything else. And there is the Pegasus. So he will poke us for two damage, giving us access to our limit break as early as our first grade three ride. I don't know if that's smart. I might be super greedy here and like put all my eggs in the basket of Penguin Soldier and digging for our dude. I don't know. I might. I just might. Especially given that Penguin Soldier can swing at the main by himself. Oh, that'd be, that'd be a juicy turn. I'm not going to lie to you. There's Algos. Okay, that's a lot of not Basil and not Diamantes. So I have faith in Penguin Soldier. All right, let's see. Come on. Just top deck it and make, and make the decision easy. Oh, another Coral Salt. Okay, so I, I do have a decision to make here. Um, I will Penguin Soldier first before I use Drago Kid. There's no point in wasting a Drago Kid if I don't have to. Another Coral Assault. Okay, so we can't... I I can't I can't go for it, uh, which is sad. But I will be able just to get some good board, a, a good board here, plus the three PGs, you know. So we have all the time in the world. Uh, we're gonna start the grind game early, apparently, uh, which I'm okay with. We have heals, we have draws, we have a lot of triggers in deck actually, by the way. Uh, so it'll be fine. Not the most explosive game that I built this deck for, but you know what? It happens as a draw trigger. Already proving my point. There's a damage add. So if we see a heal trigger here. Ah, oh, that would have been a pretty good heal trigger because then we would have PG'd his critical attack, had three damage, enabled us to go to four, damage denied him, and then maybe gotten another heal trigger like cheekily. You know, like a lot of things can go our way if that kind of stuff happens, but it's all right. Nothing crazy. There's a PG, SP PG as well. Ooh, that's a cool one. I want. I, I would have liked to have seen like his the beak. Is it a beak? Whatever his helmet, like yellow part is, to have that glow as well. That would have been pretty cool. Touch for Mac Lear. There is the Dark Dictator. Nothing crazy. Uh, I don't know how badly he wants to do that. There's proof of PBD in the deck. I already assumed going forward this is like pure shadows, so it's fine. Uh, pure classic shadows. Um, unless he sees a crit here, I'm not really going to be too scared. Pushing us to five, I'd be fine with, I think, given what we have in our deck and stuff. Um, what I really just want here is a Stormrider Basil or a Stormrider Diamantes, you know? That's all I'm asking for. It's all I'm, all I'm hunting for is my damage enabler so I can start just trucking against my opponent. Like I said, this is the biggest weakness of this deck, I think, outside of being a Limit Break deck, you know, and just having those natural weaknesses. Like, if you don't see your pieces, you don't really do much. <laughs> uh, that's why we built the deck about having maximum everything. There's a, there's a, god dang, Basil. Having all this draw power for the early game as well as just having access to draw triggers. The cool thing about cards like Diamantes and Basil is like, if you're not playing against opponents that have retire effects all you gotta do is put them, in, put them in the back row and they'll naturally be safe for the entire game so once you see one you're done um but i'm not seeing any so it's not it's not fun um like i said though we have, we i have three pgs you know um so i'm not worried <laughs> i'm just worried if that makes sense i'm gonna call this booster here we have three 16k attacks Potentially, he's going to see a bunch of triggers here. Nothing crazy. There's a draw trigger right there. The Diamantes would have loved to have drawn that. Yes! Diamantes! The boy! Oh, I did that wrong. It's okay. I, I made a misplay. The, the, uh, the, the power should always go to the boy here. But luckily, he's a 10k Vanguard, so I'm not punished. <laughs> but the power should have gone to Coral Assault because then you swing 16 and then you swing 21 in case they don't get the trigger. And look at that! From 2 to 5 in one turn. Who says you need Maelstrom's effect to win this game? Not me! You don't, <laughs> we're good. And what's cool here is like, even if he goes like, okay, ride PBO, retire your intercept, attack, attack, attack. You're at five damage. I got the three PGs in my hand. He's seen two heal triggers and I have a Diamantes for the guaranteed four attacks next turn, no matter what I draw. Looking really good for us, boys and girls. Looking really good. Cannot complain about this. Cannot complain about this. Also, we know he's out two PGs as well. There's a third heal trigger out of his deck, boys and girls. Oh, we're looking so good this game, despite having nothing. <laughs> despite having literally nothing the entire time. We were looking so good. I'm not really going to put that on the deck. It's really just because, like, we drew three PGs against Shadow Paladins and we're housing. But you know what? A win's a win, man. We'll take it. We have another game to show off how to play with the deck. It's fine. I'll do it next turn. You guys will see what happens. <laughs> You guys will see what happens. Oh my goodness, that's just funny to me that we're just kicking butt without without anything that we normally use. <laughs> there is the double intercepts though, which could be a problem for us given that I don't have. Uh, but he's gonna let me keep my maelstrom column, which is super cool. I actually will call over this. So like, I'm, I'm gonna do a weird play next turn. You guys will see it, but I promise you it'll make sense. 
I promise it'll make sense. Is there crit? He was playing Spec Duke. Ooh, spice. Okay, spicy one. -up? Spicy one -up, probably. And a draw trigger. He's playing a mix actually, which I kind of like. Good for him. But like I said, guys, two Pascals in our hand. We're living La Vida Loca. It's fine. This is always the really cool thing about Vanguard Zero. With how small our deck size is, usually if you're not seeing your aggressive pieces for your combos and stuff, you're seeing your defensive pieces like PGs and stuff, uh, which is super cool. Or you're just seeing a bunch of triggers, which which would always suck. But you know what? It's fine. Whether they're grade zeros or grade threes. <laughs> Coral Assault. Okay, so yeah. So we're going to right skip. The best thing usually to call behind Diamantes is going to be like... Oh my God, let me just get rid of it. Yeah. Retire. Yes. Switch, call you. Uh, Draco Kid, I will not activate his effect. I'd rather just have the booster. Um, I will activate your effect. I have been known to forget to do that before. <laughs> like I said, guys, I've never played Aqua Force before in real life. I don't remember these things. And this is a new kind of skill, so it's hard to keep track of these new, newer skills. Of, like, what you're supposed to do. But this will let me kind of force out his two PGs. Uh, keep an intercept. Get rid of his intercepts. Uh, which all are really good. I'll get to kill his back row rear guards as well, get rid of all of his attackers essentially, and say you need to have everything in your hand to kill me. And even then I might get a heal trigger here, which would just kind of, I think, seal up the game if he doesn't see a crit, which would be super good for us. There's a limit break proccing. We're gonna be swinging for 24, which is super nice. There's one. And there's the heal trigger. Like I said, I had all four in my deck. I was not, not a doubt in my mind I was gonna see one, if I'm honest with you. Not, not a doubt in my mind. There's the hit, no PG, that's game one, baby, in the books. That was a really fast game. I'll try and play maybe three games today with this deck, really try and show off the power it has. But with that being said, we're gonna rank up on to game two. All right, here we are for game two, fighting against Royal Paladin. Okay, all right. First we fight against Shadow Paladin, now we're gonna fight against Royal Paladin. What's next, Gold Paladin? <laughs> Aichi versus Leon, or Ren versus Leon, all that fun stuff. Uh, let's see. I actually wouldn't mind putting him at the Pascal to try and draw a different grade one. But what if I don't draw any? I'm still forced to ride my only PG then. I'm going to do this. See what happens. Oh my god. <laughs> What's with being drawn PGs today? Um, like the, like the least like aggressive grade one I have. I'm seeing all of them. Okay. I mean, I don't mind it. Again, now we're fighting against potentially MLB, so having access to the PGs is really good. Uh, a really cool thing about this deck, by the way, against MLB is that we do have access to 12k attackers in Diamantes as well as Coral Assault, so we can actually poke against them twice potentially, which is really good, or always poke his rear guards, uh, which is super nice. And yes, that is proof for fighting against MLB. Super nice, can't wait to see what he does. Uh, I do have Valeria, but no other grade two turn cards in my hand, so I'm not gonna be pushing for that. And again, we're, we're Stormite or Dry, which is very sad. But there's a draw trigger, can we see a Diamantes? Basil, even better, let's go. If I see, no, given that I don't have any splash assaults, I won't be going for a grade two rush turn no matter what I draw here, but getting a Valeria isn't bad. Definitely don't mind seeing that. Now, do I be any more aggressive this turn? I really don't want to, if I'm honest. I'm just gonna swing for the one damage and then move on, you know? Like, there's two modes of this deck most of the time. You know, there's super aggressive because you have the cards in your hand, or there's the grindy game because you can play that way given your late game skills. So I see no reason not to just push for that. Uh, but now I have everything in my hand. So the second it's go time, it's go time, uh, which is super nice. Which is again, like another kind of reason, like if you want to play 8K damage ads, you totally can, because the more you have, the more explosive you can be. Uh, and sometimes your opponent can't respond to that very well, given their hand size or given their board presence, because you not only get rid of cards that they have, but you also draw more cards. So even if they respond to you, chances are you can respond back to them. So like it's a back and forth and whoever runs that stuff first loses. So there comes the Trumpeters, another K, nothing crazy. No Libregal proc, which leads to me to believe that they have MLB in hand already. Um, or a blast blade so they don't need to search for Gantz a lot. You know, one of those two things. But my hand is getting super huge. It's eight cards right now. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing something else. Another Basil. Okay, so we're definitely good for like ever, which is super nice. Um, I will be able to proc my effects this turn. And so we're going to be going for it, which is just fun. Uh, we're going to go like this, like this, yes like this, like this. We're gonna activate Draco Kid's skill. 
put it into the soul give our plus 1k to our vanguard we're gonna gain 6k right no no only because you gained the five on the thing yes yeah, so we're gonna gain 3k go to 15 i want to guarantee hit with maelstrom i'm going to activate basil skill because i've been known to forget that all the time uh and then we're good to go i sadly will not get to uh, maybe maybe i should have given the effect to maybe i should have given the effect to valeria but i'd rather draw two cards than kill one I, I'd, I'd rather i'd rather guarantee draw the card than potentially kill a unit and draw a card you know like the risk of not hitting with valeria is there but there is no risk of not actually no there is huh because he could he, he can get defensive here still so yeah there's always a risk uh so i should i should have just gone for it then with valeria so that was a bit of a misplay but i do need to get a trigger with that so ha if i see a trigger here it was a misplay to not give it to valeria Okay, so there's a trigger. Yep, I should have given I should have given it to Valeria. Oh wait, no, Valeria can gain 5k on swing. Oh god. Like I said, guys, I've never played Aqua Force IRL before, so I will naturally make mistakes with this deck. Um so I could have killed the K there on top of everything else I did. So that would have been a much, much better play uh than what I ended up doing. Because I could have just swung with Vanguard first and then swung with Valeria, made her the fourth battle, and then activated her effect. She gains 5k on swing with a counter blast one, so it would have been fine. Uh, I'm very, very stupid. That was a big misplay pointing it out to you guys right now so you guys don't point out to me in the comments there is the killing of our basil in the back row which is super nice against mlb they're forced to kill our back row rear guards instead of our front row rear guards so we get to keep intercepts and there is no calling a blast of dark because my opponent has used all their star call trumpeters to be somewhat aggressive against us it's a huge misplay on their part uh they are definitely not pressuring us any sense of the word this turn the question here though is do they give us our limit break and do we draw damage at oh we didn't but it's fine do they give us our limit break here Oh, wait, no, they can't. Never mind. We're fine because we got the defensive. So we have no limit break. But we don't really need one this turn or for a while. And so I'm actually going to be a bit aggressive here. Um, let's see. Right skip. No need for navel gazer. I'm going to hang on to Basil. He's kind of pointless here anyway. Uh, he doesn't even hit the Vanguard. Oh, no, he does hit the Vanguard. Ooh. No, because I can't restand anything. So there's no point in going for a cheap attack like that. I think he's going for a Penguin Soldier here. Drawing an extra card, maybe getting a damage add. Nope, there's an Algos, though. Ooh. Oh, now, now it's actually kind of worth it to go for Basil, isn't it? Because I can I can go... Oh, now, now I regret calling that there. Because what I could do now is call Algos here. Call Coral Salt here. Call Basil. Swing, swing, swing. And then swing with Algos. Draw a card. Hmm. Is, is that draw worth it, though? I don't think it is. I think I'd, I'd, I would just rather hang on to Coral Salt and then just call this Algos here. And then nothing else. Yeah. Given, given that they're not doing much, it's okay for us not to, to, not, to not do much back. Uh, we're going to have double intercept. We got we, we got rid of a blaster blade, by the way. They just wasted a blaster blade, uh, which is never good as the MLB player. So that's really good for us to see. It's areas like this where I'm like, maybe stand triggers are good because they enable you to actually get to fourth battle without the need for any basils or storm riders. Plus, you can like just have extra poke attacks. But these kind of situations rarely happen because either people are being too aggressive against you so you can respond back, or you have options uh, of storm riders and extra things to get more advantage. I definitely misplayed super hard in not killing this K last turn. He's going to have a thing that can attack my rear guards now no matter what he draws here. So definitely I'm ashamed of myself for that misplay, but it's okay. We're, we're, in, we're in nowhere close to a bad position, but we're not in the best position possible, which is why I'm upset. Uh, let's see, so there's a Blaster Blade. Do we see the Blaster Dark finally? We do see the Counter Blast to get rid of our Coral Salt. We have a perfectly good replacement here in our hand, though, so it's fine. And there is the Blaster Dark. He has top decked his Blaster Dark or got, or got enough a draw trigger, as well as two more Blaster Blades, which again, he's wasting a Blaster Blade, but he just wants the intercepts. I get that. I respect that. If I, if I see a Diamantes here, I wouldn't mind playing that instead because Diamantes can hit 12k and Basil can only hit 11k. So we can actually poke for that, like, you know, six damage before we do anything else. Um, there's the heal trigger. So, yep, now I'm very much upset about that because now I'm, in, now I'm in a weird position here where I can't make Basil 11k. Maybe saving the Draco Kid against MLB is the smarter thing to do, but I thought just given how good the start was, it was fine to use him. But now that we're in this position, it could be a problem. Uh, yep, no top deck to save us there uh we do have access to coral salt though which is fine we'll, we'll be able to sneak in that fifth damage really nicely um i, I want to go for the play that maximizes my aggressive pressure but lets me also keep intercept in play uh because he only has one blaster blade left right or is he out of blaster blades he has one two he has one left yeah right yeah one left okay so the best thing is going to be to have basil yeah call him right there Next thing to do is going to be to call you. It doesn't really matter where I call you, huh? I'll 
I'll put you here. And I'll put this here. Oh. Oh, then I think I just misplayed actually. Because what I could do in theory. Hmm. Wait, I'm at four damage. You know what? Given that I have four damage and a PG in my hand, I'm feeling safe to go a bit more aggressive here. Yeah. But what I should have done was call Coral Soul here and then, and then just call this Basil in the front row because I'm not going to be able to hit anything for more than 15k anyway. So there's no point in having an 18k column over there. That was a dumb move on my part, but it's okay. Activating the skill of Basil to ignore Intercept just so that way we can just poke and still activate our effect by attacking the Vanguard. It doesn't hit because it's 12 and not 11. If had a kept Draco Kid or had Diamantes, I would have been able to hit, which would have been much nicer. But yeah, so had I had Coral Salt here and then called Basil where Coral Salt is now, I would have been able to keep both intercepts and keep a Basil probably as well, which would have been just super strong for us. Um, but I will say if he top decks a Blast Blader, because that's just the one he can get rid of both Basils. So maybe hanging on to the option of keeping Basil as a whole is still better, but I don't like that I made that mistake though. He has three cards in hand, only access to three PGs. Uh, chances are he only has two max in his hand, so we'll be able to eventually grind out a victory, but if he, if he sees another heal trigger here, we could be in trouble. There's a Diamante, so that's huge. Uh, we can poke for a fifth or sixth damage, uh, uh sorry, a seventh or, we, we, we can poke for a fifth or sixth damage, even if he does heal now, which is super nice. Uh, and then all we need to do is have plenty of attacks for his rear guards, and we can probably go for game next turn, no matter what happens now, so that's really nice. Uh, let's see what he got. There is an Alfred, there's a 10k, MLB. Nothing else, no intercepts at all. Um, so I don't even really need to activate that effect, which is just nice. And does he get the heal? If he doesn't, we're, we're sitting very pretty. No heal trigger, but I will try and still play around the heal trigger. Uh, that's a really good thing about Maelstrom is that he always plays around heal triggers because he hits such big numbers by himself. Uh, he's swinging right now for 26 every single turn uh, with limit break, so that's really good for metric numbers. Uh, one more K would have been nice for 27, but we don't need that. He's not getting to. Um, ride skip. Call. Mm. These dudes don't even hit my vanguard. I'm not concerned about them. So conserving intercepts are not important. Just having attacks are. Yeah, I'd rather just attack him three times and then attack one of the rear guards if he does double six damage heal, which is a possibility, yeah? Because I still have a PG in my hand. No, I don't have a PG in my hand. Oh, I thought I did. Okay, there, there's the, there's one PG gone, though, right? So now I'm just gonna, for good measure, just swing at that. Because if he does heal, he gets to call intercepts with that. All right, and then we swing at this. He needs to see two heal triggers here to survive. But I still get to retire his rear guards, too. And there it was! Oh, wow! Okay, we survived the misplay. It wasn't like a game-winning, a game-ending misplay, but... It was nice. Again, very Storm Rider dry in the beginning there, as well as damage at or dry. Uh, so, again, the problems of like not seeing your pieces are clear here with Aqua Force. But despite that, once we got our engine going, uh, our opponent was also behind as well, thanks to them missing their first MLB turn. So that gave us enough uh, time to get going, which was very nice. That was a good matchup. Moving on to game three and finishing off this video. All right, boys and girls, here we are for the final game, fighting against Pale Moon. So no Paladin Trifecta, a Pale Moon player, most likely playing Lukie. If it's Dreamy Fortress, we do have a problem, or we don't have a problem because we can ignore it and then retire it eventually. So we can always get like little pokes against them, which is better than zero. Um, our hand is not super pretty. I don't like keeping Diamantes or without having another grade three in my hand. I'm gonna be a bit greedy here. And my greed definitely didn't hurt me. I would have had three Diamantes in my hand potentially if I didn't do that, so that's nice to see. Uh, but I do get I do get my Storm Rider Basil though, and another Basil, so I could in theory have a really good grade two turn that might let me draw more cards and dig for Maelstrom. So that's a really good thing for us. I wouldn't mind seeing another grade two or even a Maelstrom in my hand. Those are like the two options I want. Actually, a grade one wouldn't be bad either, so that way I, that way I can guarantee it with Algos. That's a good point, Steve-O. A grade one wouldn't be bad. but I will be able to have a really good grade two turn. They're running a 7K, so I can go, what, eight and then 14. So they don't, oh, I could be greedy. And if they don't get a defensive, I can always hit with Algos as long as I draw a unit that I can attack with. Wouldn't mind that, but I might just keep the Draco Kids that way I can guarantee hit and just get the draw one instead of the draw two. There's an Algos. All right, do we draw a grade one or a grade two or a Maelstrom? Those are the only cards I want to see, nothing else. No grade threes besides Maelstrom. <laughs> 
Oh no, or PGs, I probably should have mentioned that as well. Okay, so now we're in a predicament here where the only way I can go for a grade two turn is by calling a Pascal. I am fighting against Pale Moon, and so I don't think it's that bad. Being able to potentially draw two cards would be very huge. Wait, I would swing for 15. Oh, that's not a magic number, regrettably. I think at this point, it's okay for me to be a bit greedy, and it's for the video. Let's be greedy. Let's do it. Let's be wild and crazy. This is not, I don't recommend doing this, but I'm doing it, so it's fine. <laughs> I'm not gonna activate the, the Draco Kid, though. I'm not gonna be that greedy. I just want to draw one so I can dig for my stuff. Oh, I should have been greedy. I should have been the greediest boy in the land, boys and girls. I should have been the greediest boy in the land. But now we just go for our two weenie attacks. We just we just go for the weenies. Uh, and then we go for our big boy. And we say, time for me to draw cards. Watch it be the Maelstrom, though, and be like, oh, yes, always, always, always do it. So that's what's possible. Okay, so we have more options in our hand. Um, depending on what I draw and depending on what they do, I might just stay on Algos. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Staying on Algos might be better than riding Diamantes because getting a guaranteed draw is better than having a 9k grade 3 Vanguard. That sucks. <laughs> just It's just honesty, right, folks? It's just honesty. And Splash Assault will hit for 10k, so he can swing at intercepts. So unless we see two intercepts here, we'll be able to use Algos to his full strength. And there's no intercepts, actually. Wow. Okay, so our opponent is not being anywhere near aggressive against us, despite us being somewhat aggressive against them. So I actually don't, if, if I don't see Maelstrom here or Naval Gazer, I'm staying on Algos. I'm staying on Algos, boys and girls, and we're getting draws on draws on draws. <laughs> Naval Gazer, okay, yes, that's why we play this boy. We're gonna get some value out of our Naval Gazers, boys and girls. I do not mind that. And Basil's hitting 14, so here we go. Looking pretty good. Right side here is, um, do I want to go for you? Because you will hit, you will, you will hit 14. Nah, I won't be that greedy. This will let me hit 19. So yeah, we'll just stay like this. Just activate their normal effects. You'll swing for 19. You'll swing for that. Uh, I'd rather switch with you than, you know, than lose my intercept, right? Do I have to switch? I think, yeah, I, I think it's a force trigger for the switch. Uh, there's a draw trigger, so I'll swing for the 14. So that, way, that, way, that, way, that way we can guarantee hit with Naval Gazer, obviously. I also don't mind giving them limit break at this point in the game because I don't think it matters. I'm at one damage. I, I really don't care. It's a draw trigger maelstrom. Oh, the next card. Penguin soldier could see a maelstrom with that. That'd be pretty good. Uh, but honestly, I think it's going to be a navel gazer game. And with how aggressive we're being, it's kind of fitting to navel gazer being that he's a more aggressive card. So if my opponent just like lets me keep these valuable units in my, in, on my board. I'll be able to just attack them a bunch. Um, and they're not. N oh, also navel gazer in theory by being able to restand can kind of counter all the intercepts they get which is pretty cool because i think he can he hit vanguard or anything he has to attack vanguard yeah okay there's an alice uh a midnight invader and their soul is two cards <laughs> so this is why not playing cards like uh the presenter starter is pretty bad because his soul sucks um yeah it's it just i don't know why i didn't call this here for a 22k column oh so alice could hit that's why he wants alice to hit for some reason i don't know what he thinks he gets with that but he gets something a grade three and soul, that's what he gets. That's what he wants. Got you, I, I can I can see between the lines. I got him, I figured him out. Uh, he wants a trigger here to use the fire juggler, but from the looks of his hand, he's drawing a lot of triggers, so I feel bad for him. Uh, but yeah, I didn't draw Maelstrom, so I don't, I don't feel too bad. <laughs> so he's gonna swing in our Vanguard now, activate his Alice's effect, put in the soul, call out a thing, probably just chump attack our dude with the tamer. Uh, if he gets the fire juggler, he can get the booster back for her and make her a 22k column, potentially hit us to 4 damage, uh, which would be very nice. So far, we're just seeing the standard non 9 draw build. Uh, sometimes they play stands to be cheeky, but I don't think with fire juggler you, you would you would play stands. That's a little bit anti-synergistic, I think. Uh, it, can, it can get a little awkward, I bet. Power to Vanguard, so he's not planning on attacking me again. He didn't even use Alice's effect. His soul is literally one card. Two cards. Now he's going to use fire juggler. I don't... I don't think he wants this. What's he gonna call? Girl across the gap so he can use her again next turn? But you can just counter last two to do that. I don't know. That feels like a waste. Oh, wait, no, it's not. He puts the grade one soul. Oh, wait, no, he's still gonna. It, it's weird. I don't know why. Like, unless he puts another grade one in there, it doesn't matter because they're always gonna call. It. And there is a damage enabler for us. Oh, dip. Okay, boys and girls, we're gonna go crazy this turn. Okay, here we go. This, here's the move. Okay. 
Activate skill. Yes. Go in there. Double yes. Um, calling. Light signals Penguin Soldier. Yes. Activating skill. Soul Blast 2. Yes. Getting a Pascal. Double yes. Not going to be putting it in the damage zone first. Amazing. Maelstrom. Pooh. Could have drawn that instead. Uh, no need to activate your effect because all those things. No intercepts. Go into battle phase. Swing. Swing at both the rear guards and then swing at the vanguard. Uh, I won't restand anything probably, but I will get four attacks and I will get to potentially restand stuff. No defensive, maybe I will restand stuff. I don't know. They don't gain power, do they? I forget. They don't, no. So yeah, not really the best things in the world to restand, but just getting four enabled attacks is just nice. Oh, I went in the wrong order there. That's a Monka gig over there, folks. I thought it was already 10k. It's third battle and we're not the second battle. That's my mistake. It's okay. Won't happen again. I have to hit anyway for this to restand, but just getting the extra power boost at top of the on-hit draw effect is just nice. Heal trigger. Oh, oh, dang. So that yeah, the order there could have been a lot better, obviously. Um, I also realized I don't need to go. I could have saved the the duder here and had I had boosters, it could have been better. But you know, it was just an awkward thing. Now we're at three damage though. One PG in hand. He needs a lot to go his way in order to kill us this turn, and we still have access to Diamantes, and so we can get potentially two attacks at his Vanguard guaranteed next turn, regardless of intercepts, and he's already revealed one PG. So unless he has all three in his hand next turn, we will get that six damage most likely. Uh, but we also see no heals from him pretty much, so very likely that he could heal this turn depending on when he drive checks here. So it could really go either way, honestly. I'm not, uh, given how little we're being aggressive and how pretty trash our board is, honestly. Uh, it's not looking great for us, but it's not looking bad by any means. We'll always have a 22k Vanguard, which is pretty cool. Uh, once we get our limit break going pretty steadily, so that's nice. Uh, that, way we, that way we can naturally play around defensives. Again, his intercepts just don't matter. We have plenty of chump dudes just to go after them, and we can just ignore them outright, which is just nice. Three cards in his hand. Unless all three of those cards are PGs, he's dying next turn or getting, or getting a six damage. So he needs to steal a heal here. I'm pretty confident in that. Uh, so let's see what happens. He's deciding, I think, if he wants to use Girl Across the Gap for the Fire Juggler. I don't see a reason to. I think it has to boost the Vanguard, right? Yeah. So, no, it doesn't really matter. Um, I Yeah, I don't think it matters as much to him as he thinks it does. I wonder if he's going to go for... He's probably, he's probably going to swing Nitro first. I, watch him swing at a rear guard, because he's like, I want that gone. <laughs> nope. Swing at the Penguin. I dare you. Do it. You know you want to. There's a draw trigger. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Maelstrom! Yeah! Oh, baby, the blue storm dragon is coming. The wind is coming. Let's go, baby. Oh, man, never punished, boys. I think I had all four in there, though, so it was pretty likely. I had three in there. I saw I drove track one. Draw trigger for him so he can use fire trigger. That's not a heal trigger, though. That's not a heal trigger, though. Oh, baby, we're looking pretty good here. He needs to have all three PGs in hand now if he wants to survive. Or... You know, because no, you know, as long as I have enough units to attack, it doesn't matter what intercepts he calls out. Yeah, it doesn't matter how many he calls out, because I'll, I'll I'll have two attacks that can't hit anyway, so it won't matter. They'll just, they'll just hit the rear guards, so it's fine. And he'll trigger for us, so we're mega not dying. <laughs> how many triggers are in my deck actually? F uh, five? How many are in his? Uh, eight, potentially five as well. Uh, I think there's at least one in his hand. I'm gonna give him at least one. Activating that, he's gonna thin his deck, but he's also gonna shuffle his deck. Oh, or, or he's not gonna activate. Don't, don't activate the skill. It's a very bad play to activate the skill. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's a mistake. Like, you're thinning one, but you're also shuffling, so you're actually anti thinning. Oh, no. Misplay. That's a misplay, I think. But yeah, go ahead. Swing at the penguin. Swing at the penguin. I dare you. Oh, he didn't swing at the penguin. He knows. He can't hurt the god penguin. He can't hurt the god penguin. Good. Respect. Okay. Yeah, okay. Riding Maelstrom. Diamantes for Diamantes doesn't seem bad. No, does it? Because they're both nine Ks. No, it's fine. Yeah, I'm just gonna call you right there. Activating your effect. That's this one. That way I can ignore the intercepts, and then I'll attack them after the fact. Can you ignore intercepts all the time? It's the first battle. No, that'd be cool if you could have. All right, swing. Do you have the PG? There's one. Do you have two more though? So you're gonna need two more. Sorry, no, one more. Sorry, you're gonna need one more. <laughs> Oh, it was two BGs. I don't have three attacks. Right, because he got the second intercept, right? If he didn't grab that, I could have. Right. Duh. Math. So the Alice effect did matter. But we do have this. I will retire cards. It doesn't matter against Lukier, though, sadly, because his soul is a bit more stacked. There's a Pascal. And that, does he have the second PG? He does not! Does he have the heal trigger? 
He does not. Let's go, boys and girls. Oh, man, those are three really good games with Aqua Force. <laughs> Even though I didn't draw really anything I wanted to at any point in the game, we were still able to win. That's that that's that's got to say something, OK? That's got to say something about how good this deck is. Oh, super excited. And boom, there you guys go. That is my Aqua Force deck list and gameplay demo for Carpet Vanguard Zero. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy. Those are some crazy games. Fought against a lot of board spammy decks, a lot of cross ride decks. They just didn't draw what they wanted and I didn't draw what I wanted, so it's a weird game all, all together. But as that that's that's it is what it is in Vanguard Zero, boys and girls. You do what you can with what you got, and we could do better with, with what we had. Pascal loved us today. We did some awkward plays, some questionable plays, but overall, I think I showed off the deck really well. I think I explained how to use the deck really well, and I think this deck is really well positioned in the meta. By no means do I think it's the best deck in terms of power, but I do like where it's headed, and once we get set eight and Glory Maelstrom, by all means, it'll become the best deck because of all the options it has and how powerful it will be but for now enjoy playing aqua force mess around with it find your own personal play style and go with it and trust it trust yourself and enjoy playing this game if you guys did enjoy the video be sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel and click that bell for notifications so that you guys know when my videos go live for you if you have any follow-up questions that this video did not answer be sure to leave them down in the comments below or better yet hop into my twitch channel where i go live every monday thursday friday i do all kinds of things in just chatting and I play a lot of Vanguard Zero so come ask some questions and hopefully get some live answers but with all that being said you guys as always I have been your true champion Steven please be sure to work hard rest easy and live well and I'll see y'all next time peace